I'm Ashley Gordon with the Daily Sundial at Cal State Northridge. Today I'm joined by Eshimo Meni, a mass communications graduate student who recently returned to Los Angeles from Iran. Esha was held in solitary confinement for a month in October over 2008 and then forbidden from leaving that country for nine months. That was punishment for studying the women's movement in Iran. Welcome, Esha. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, really, can you retrace your reasons for being in Iran? Uh, I was working on my um, master thesis project on a women's right movement in Iran and uh, chose One Million Signature Campaign as a case study because of its um, diversity. Uh, I, could, um, I could cover different women with different backgrounds and so I conducted some interviews uh, with uh, women's rights activists and the women who were victims of uh, Iranian law because what One Million sign Signature Campaign is seeking is it's seeking to change discriminatory laws against women in Iran. And in doing that, how did that manifest itself in a project? Uh, I talked to um, different activists and um, some just um, regular people, women who were, um, their life had um, hurt by Iranian law. Got it. And now, can you retrace what happened the day that you were arrested? What work were you doing that day? Actually, that day I was going to interview with um, a young activist, women's rights activist and um, children rights activist. And um, it was 9 o'clock. I was driving in the highway and um, just trying to think about my questions. And suddenly, just a car with no sign or anything um, crossed my way. and. In a minute, there was one guy with gun sitting next to me in the car, and so I actually, what I did, I opened the door and I ran out of the car, and I sat in the middle of the highway and started screaming. And then, um, so the other pe the people who were passing me, they, they were, they wanted to know if I have any, I need any help, but these people tried to just um, keep everything, uh, like they tried to. Uh, silent me. So they took me aside the highway and then they put hand, they handcuffed me and they took me to our home. They knew the address, they knew everything and then they collected all my research uh, materials, all my films and my computer and papers and everything and then they took me to prison. And was that nine in the morning or nine at night? Nine in the morning. And were you told during your arrest anything about why you were pulled over or why they were confiscating your work? First they said uh, I violated um, driving laws, but then uh, when I w insisted that I haven't done anything wrong, then they uh, said we are from um, intelligence, uh, we are intelligence agents and we have permission to arrest you. But uh, they, I mean, I didn't see anyone until uh, they took me to the prison. And uh, I think it's uh, by law they have to tell you what is your accusation in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So um, someone came and then they told me I'm charged with uh, propaganda against the government, against the state, and um, acting against security, state security, government security. And what was it like? Was there anyone at your home during the time that they stopped there to get to gather all your belongings? Actually, they wanted uh, they wanted to uh, when when they stopped my car, I I had I could call my mom. I mean, they didn't want me to do that, but because the doors were locked and everything, so I called my mom. I said, you know, uh, I'm in trouble. So she comes out of the house to come and find me and see what's my problem because I didn't know they're gonna arrest me. So um, she came after, after a while, I guess, while we were, we were inside the house. And what was that like for her? She was, uh, you know, at that moment they told her they're, they're just going to ask some question from me and they'll let me go. And uh, at least they said, you know, um, it might take two, three days, but not more than that. 
she was just, I don't know, I remember her face. She was, it was so hard for her. I mean, especially when I went, I left with them, it was, it was, yeah, it was so hard. And now fast forward, you get to Evan Prison. From what we hear, it, it, what's been reported, it's notoriously tough prison to be in. Um, so I kind of want to know what your experience was, especially since I believe you were, for the 28 days that you were in prison, 25 were in solitary confinement. So can you explain the conditions that you were in? Um, first of all, I think because of my um, being kind of privileged and with being like ha having dual citizenship, so I mean, I realized this after I came out that uh, I got uh, my um, case got so many attention and I had uh, all the support. So they really didn't. I didn't get the same treatment as other prisoners get. Um, but I mean, still, it's it's a very hard situation. I was in I was in smaller cell. I couldn't even uh, you know I couldn't lay like in, from one side. It was it was that small, it was smaller than my height. And um, I was there for two, three days. It was like, it's, it was a dark room. And then uh, they took me in a better, to the better cell, better. <laughs> it was just a little bit bigger. And um, the light were 24, the light was 24 hours on. And um, like, you don't have bathroom. Whenever you want to go to bathroom, you have to push a button and it takes time for the, um, people who, the guards to come and open the door. And um, then uh, I, they just, get, I didn't have anything to do. I didn't have, they gave me one or two book, books in very first day, which one of them was about torturing. And uh, then I ha only had like, um, sometimes I could get newspaper, but uh, conservative newspaper who support uh, the governments and their pro-governments and basically it's another torture just reading those <laughs> newspapers. And I had 19 um, interrogation sections and um, that's hard to sometimes it was like from the morning they would wake me up, took me down to asking questions and I, I would be back like it was night time I could tell it's night and I think it would Sometimes it went on for 10, 11 hours. And, and what, what were the questions that were brought up during interrogation? First, they wanted um, to know who's behind this project. Mm -hmm. So they were saying um, the same, I mean, I'm, I've, I've been paid to, do, to doing this project, and this is part of the uh, Velvet, the project of overthrowing the government by Western countries, by America, and uh, um, then uh, they wanted to know if I have seen any CIA agent in my life, or an FBI agent, and then um, they asked about um, campaign in California, the, the activists in Iran, why I interviewed, why I chose those people, why was I aware of some of them had political backgrounds, was I aware of that and and are you referring to the project you were working on yes and the people you were speaking to yes. having ties right to okay 